Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm here to talk about Supernatural, episode 1302, titled The Rising Sun, which premiered Thursday, October 19, 2017, on The CW. I am recording on the 22nd of October, um, so I have a bit of the weekend to kind of think things over and everything like that. But huge spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first. I highly, highly suggest that you do. Then come back and see what I have to say about the episode. Otherwise, my other video reminders are up on screen right now, so take a moment to remind yourselves of those. And otherwise, let's start the 10-minute clock, and let's begin with what happened in this episode. So before we really get into that, I have totally forgot to comment on the new um, season's title card. And that is the sense that when the title Supernatural comes up, um, it is now encased in uh, pretty much a ring of holy fire, which resembles a lot like Jack's eyes when he, I guess you could say, powers up and has his eyes glowing. So it's very, it, the, cir the flaming circle kind of has a dual purpose um, in this title card which i thought was pretty cool once i uh, noticed that so there's that so timeline wise um it's three days since the season 12 finale um as jack says he's been alive for three days seven or three days 17 hours and 42 minutes very precise but uh that's what makes them all lovable and whatnot so there's that um also with the episode reminder it's pretty much um pretty much get a sense of just how m how much of a wanted being jack is and how easy it could be to track him down if not the pr proper precautions being taken place and just trying to navigate it's a little bit more jack centric but trying to navigate what exactly he could do or why people want him and such so there's that so uh, episode breakdown picked up on three specific storylines first one being understanding the world through jack um second one being protecting jack and the third one dealing with everything that happens in the apocalypse world or as it were or the alternate dimension um so with the first one with understanding the world we find that jack is trying to understand the world around him to the most basic of things to the most um celestial of things i guess you can say we get sam and dean arguing over what to do with jack sam is defending him dean wants to kill him so there's that um also we see jack teleporting as well as healing himself um uh, instinctually from the looks of it um they tried getting uh, uh sigils and wards tattooed on him which only ended up being healed away um so there's that um we also learn that jack learns why dean hates him or he we know jack has picked up on dean's antagonism towards him but now he gets a little insight from sam as to why exactly dean has this hatred for him which is a very sad moment but i it definitely needed the conversation needed to be had so there's that uh the second storyline though um is protecting jack so that is in the sense that um the fourth prince of hell named asmundus he comes to take place as the ruler of hell until lucifer returns now asmundus wants jack not only to um kind of teach him and bring him under his wing but he wants jack to release these evil list of creatures that lucifer had even wanted to lock away in hell apparently they're too evil for hell apparently and they are the shadim as he says um lucifer was so against um the idea of asmondos um, um setting these creatures free he actually um uh caused the scar t on asmondos's face so he um, he scarred him disfigured him however you want to say it uh to the point that for a demon that's pretty it's pretty uh <laughs> You can't get away from it, I guess you can say. It's very permanent for him. So there's that. Now, at the Apocalypse world, this is where uh, we find out that Lucifer wants to use Mary to trade her to Sam and Dean in return for Jack. And that's why he's keeping her alive. We also meet the alternate world's version of Michael, who in this world, apocalyptic, apocalyptic world, is where he had killed Lucifer already. And apparently, he looked like he reveled in it too, though. So, um there's that type of uh, mixed dynamic right over there but the last scene of the episode shows dean telling jack that he will be the one to kill him if and when it comes down to it after dean had found jack trying to repeatedly stab himself with no such result i guess you could say so there's that now tidbit wise though we get the constant um debate of nature versus nurture um between um sam and dean as well as uh donatello's academic input from that as well so there's that we also get donatello returning um with the update that he's been living life without his soul since his encounter with amara at the very end of season 11 um, and when he's at a moral crossroads he asks himself what would mr rogers do and apparently that helps him set his course so there's that um also a fun little thing about the episode is that we get 
to see Jack trying to mimic Dean's mannerisms, um, trying to learn the world through copying, I guess you can say. So that's a little fun thing to see. Um, but moving on to end tally or death tally, whichever way you want to call it. But we get the, um, the angel brigade in the apocalypse world all being killed by Lucifer with the snap of his fingers. We get the demons that, uh, or we get the mention from Asmundus that all the Crowley followers, all those demons are being um, purged, as he said. So there's that. We also get one demon killed by Sam to save Dean, and then we get another demon killed by Dean to save Donatello. So there is that. Uh, moving on to the most shocking moment of the episode, I would have to say for me it was the fact that the alternate universe's Michael had killed Lucifer. I mean, that is one way. That world is very different from the one that we have known for the last 12 years. But because the little bits that we knew about it since its reveal in the season 12 finale, I thought that world differed majorly because of the fact it was a world where Sam and Dean were never born. Uh, and as the two main vessels of Michael and Lucifer, I thought then the whole reason it became Apocalypse World was because there was a constant fight between between Michael and Lucifer, not the fact that Lucifer was already killed and split across the universe by this Michael. So that was pretty shocking in itself right there. Now moving on to top three favorite moments. First one has to be in the form of Jack copying Dean's mannerisms. This was first seen in the sneak peek clip that they had released before the episode aired. I was laughing like crazy when I saw this. I was just, I was so amused just seeing Jack, of anyone to copy him, Jack picks Dean to copy his movements, his mannerisms, and all that. And Sam's noticing this, and Sam's having a hoot out of this. But I just found it really funny that he picked Dean um, over Sam. And Sam's the one who's been um, trying to be there for him and try to get him to understand things. While Dean's kind of been like a standoffish type of thing, or a little blunt, as it were. So it was very interesting he picked Dean. Then again, a lot of people uh, in the fandom would say that it's Destiel, um, in the making, Jack's going to be uh, kind of a product of the two of them. Jack views Castiel as his father, and yet he's been making Dean type of thing. So uh, whichever way you spin, it's hilarious having to see that unfold. Um, so there's that. Another favorite of mine has to be Sam constantly defending um, Jack to everybody, as well as fighting for Jack in a sense, when Jack doesn't really know what to do or how to do things type of thing. So it was really good to see Jack having Sam in his quarter, especially where you know that Sam could see bits of himself in Jack. So it's just really great to see him having this protective side of his towards Jack. So there's that. Another favorite of mine has to be Dean actually stopping Jack from stabbing himself um, at the very end of the episode. Um, I was actually kind of surprised um, just in the sense of how Dean went about it because it was more like, I thought like a protectiveness kind of switched on for him but then to have him later turn on the fact is just and something else but the fact that we got a little bit of a protective dean at, for jack was just something i like to see hang on sorry got a phone call so where was i so let's just skip to the third favorite moment that was pretty much lucifer saving mary Yes, it's so that he can assure she's alive so he can make the trade, but just the fact that he was even willing to save her has to be one of my favorites. I really think some type of a, a dynamic or some type of, of relationship, love-hate relationship, is going to happen between these two. For some reason, I just think it. it's not going to be fully hatred. Maybe he might grow to have a soft spot for Mary. Maybe she might have a better understanding of him somehow. I have no idea, but at the moment, she, it's obvious she hates him because of what he has done to her boys and everything, and vice versa, I guess you could say. But I'm very interested, just interested to see how this thing develops between Mary and Lucifer. So there's that. Now, moving on to my top three peed moments, the only peeve I really have is the fact that Dean um, pretty much told Jack that he was going to kill him when the time came. Now, it's a peeve of mine because now, well, I kind of expected Dean to tell Jack that, but I don't like that it happened right after Dean kind of stopped Jack from completely, repeatedly stabbing himself. It's like, for one moment, I get a very protective Dean over Jack, and then the next, I got a threatening Dean telling Jack, I, I'm if, I, if anyone's going to kill you, I'm going to be the one to kill you. It's like, a little extreme there, but again, 
I kind of expected it. It's just the timing of it is what has me a little peeved about it. So there's that. Now, moving on to what moment will I remember most when I look back on this episode. Uh, Dean cop or not Dean. Jack copying Dean's mannerisms. That is just going to be a huge reminder for me. It's just, it's just, it's too funny. For sure. So there's that. Uh, moving on to random questions very quickly. The first one is, uh, with the story of the Shadim and how Lucifer wanted them to remain locked up after Asmunda suggested they release, there's the timer. Um, would Could that be the season baddie for the Winchesters? Being that uh, Asmundus and his released Shadim creatures versus the Winchesters with possibly teaming up with Lucifer and Jack on their side to stop Asmundus and the Shadim. I'm thinking that's what's kind of setting up for it. Definitely, it's it's kind of looking up to the fact that the Shadim is kind of in replacement to what the Leviathans were. Remember, the Leviathans were very um, everyone or every supernatural creature um, thought the Leviathans were like the baddest. They shouldn't be. Able, they would pretty much eat up all of creation, type of thing. So maybe the Shadim is kind of meant to be perceived on that outlook i don't know i'm randomly but that's one question there another question is that the previous nephilim in season eight that we saw she was killed with an angel blade to the heart or not to the heart to the throat uh could jack's immunity to the the angel blade through his heart be because he is the son of an archangel is that his saving grace excuse the pun as it were so there's that question there. Um, but moving on to predictions very quickly. Based off the promo for 1303, we get Missouri Mosley returning with a case for Sam and Dean. It looks like our Wraith is hunting down other psychics. Now, Missouri Mosley was first and last seen in Season 1, Episode 9, titled The Home. Um, and the synopsis for the episode reads that uh, when her friend is murdered by a Wraith with a taste for psychics, Missouri Mosley enlists the help of Dean and Jody to protect her granddaughter, Patience, who has no idea she carries your grandmother's trait and could be next on the race hit list meanwhile sam continues to work with jack on learning how to control his powers now i am absolutely excited not only to have missouri mosley back but to also have her interact with jody mills i mean come on this is gonna be fantastic so with that said um also um this episode is meant to be the first of three episodes that kicks off the backdoor pilot for the wayward sister spinoff so that's going to be a huge thing that we're uh that i can't wait for um but otherwise guys um that's all the predictions i have right now but what do you think of the episode what do you guys like about it what do you think is going to happen next let me know in the comments down below love to hear your own thoughts series predictions about what you think is going to happen next also don't forget to like this video sus subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos if you haven't done already if you want check out my channel page the link for that is down below i uh, read about promos web, cl web clips quotes gifs and news all that good stuff all found in one place so go check it out it's also attached to my wordpress account the link for that is down below again anything i post online will be connected through there also if you want a detailed recap of the episode a play-by-play -play, if you will check out my live journal entry account the link for that is down below um so check that out um it helps me remember certain details um as i remember key moments usually um down the line on the grand scheme and things so anyways there's that but anyways Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your patience. Sorry for the rush at the end, though. Uh, my commercial break is ending. So uh, with that, guys, hope you come back next time to see what this is about the next episode. But until then, this is Mel. Wish you a great day, great week. Bye for now.